Hello everyone. In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating this kind of abstract universe with a door in it and just sending things through the door. You could use it to go from one room to another or one abstract concept to another. There's a lot of things this could metaphorically be. But we're just going to focus on the simple execution of the thing. What it means is, is up to you. I'm Evan Abrams and this is a 2D room transition in After Effects. This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, fine art, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Experts like uh, me, I have a course on there, but also experts like Fraser Davidson. He's an excellent director and animator. Check out his courses on character animation. They are very, very good. Skillshare Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms, with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description, skl.sh slash ecabrams5, that's Evan Abrams and the number 5, will get two months of Skillshare for free. Here in After Effects, I wanted to show you briefly where we're going. We're going to have to create some background layers, one for each kind of space you want to be in, and we'll have to create a layer that is the doorway, right? We just need one doorway, that's fine. And then we'll sandwich in between a bunch of those, everything that's going through the door, and that'll pretty much be it. Let's get started by making a new composition. Let's call this the light background. I'm working with 1920 by 1080, uh, 30 frames a second, four seconds long, very simple stuff. And in the example, I used a bunch of grungy textures from the Peter Quinn grit kit. You could use anything Thing you want. You could use an image of space, you could use a picture of a cat, you could use a video, you could use pretty much anything, whatever you cram into a composition. I'm going to make a new solid, make it the comp size, and I'm going to add in here a ramp, classic gradient ramp, and I'm just going to mess these around a little bit, increase the scatter to maximum, have the start color be quite a bit lighter. All right, and yeah, that looks pretty wonderful. I might add, add a little bit of noise in here, drop some noise on this. This is noise HLS. And, you know, just to, to jack up a little bit of that. Maybe we'll go with green. There we go. It's a little bit blotchy. We've created a pretty boring background, and we've got a proportion grid on. So we'll go into the project here, duplicate that background, and we'll call this the dark background. Just for some contrast, so we can see what we're doing. Double click on the dark background, go in here and edit some of these settings. So maybe we edit this to be kind of a darker, darker, much darker, so you know, way darker over here. You know, maybe, you know, less less grain over here. Good. Two, two distinct backgrounds. Perfect. Now I'll take these two backgrounds and stick them in a new composition, a single composition, don't sequence them, and we'll name this, I don't know, the assembly space. And we've got all of this stuck in our example folder. If you get confused, if you want to have a look at the files we end up making, this example is going to be available at evanabrams.com. So now that we have our two backgrounds, they're hanging out in the scene together, let's uh, make a doorway. So I'm going to go ahead, bring that proportion grid back, go up here, double click on the rectangle tool, and let's use a nice kind of bright, nice bright blue. Cool. I'm going to twirl into the contents of the rectangle, twirl into the rectangle path. I'm going to right click and convert it to a bezier path, grab my path points here, and really, I mean, I just, I just did that because I didn't want you to see how bad I am at clicking with the pen tool. It really gets kind of wacky sometimes, but I also want this to be fairly precise, so there we go. I've moved the points around. We've ended up with this kind of trapezoidal shape, and I'll just shift it off to the side a little bit right there. Cool. So that's where the door will start. I'm going to keyframe the path, hold shift, hit P, call up the position, put keyframe on that as well. Two seconds. What I'd like to have happen is for this to move over here, and I would like for the path to change. So I'll select the path, double click on it, and we'll just flip it around. I'm holding down Command so it flips around its axis and goes like that. Now, these don't necessarily have to be the same shape. They could be slightly unique. This one could be maybe a little bit larger. It could be... There we go. Now it's now it's marginally. Oh boy, that's quite a bit larger. Be like a that, you know, and they they could be totally different kind of shapes as it gets bigger across. That's great. But what we have to do 
is go to the middle point here, and we have to really find, we don't want this to happen. We don't want a midpoint where this thing totally disappears. So let's just find a point, yeah, maybe around here at 20 seconds. I'm gonna hit U, the U key, to collapse, just so we see the keyframe things, so it's a lot easier. Set a couple keyframes there, maybe roll on to be around here, set keyframes for this, and I'm gonna squish these keyframes into the middle, just like that, so there's no space between them. And I'm just gonna move the position, so it's kinda like this, and kinda like this. There, so what's going on? Well, we start out here, then we come in close, then we flip, and then we continue on the other side. All right, so the keyframes are good, but the timing is completely wrong. Let's just go into the old graph editor, select these properties, and what we're gonna do is just select them all, and we're gonna go to Easy Ease. We're gonna ease these properties, and we're gonna grab them here, I'm gonna pull the handles, pulling the handles, so that the ones on the outside are at 100%, and then I'm gonna squish, squish the inside handles, squish them, squish them up like a ski jump, so it kind of builds up to a peak here in the middle. That's a pretty nice ski jump, like so. Go to the path and repeat the process over here. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Again, make sure you're looking at a speed graph. Pull the outside handle, squish the inside handle, Pull the outside handle, squish the inside handle. Now you'll notice that the speed graph here looks a little bit weird with this little this little bump here in the middle. That's because this doesn't really have the same kind of values. It can only tell us raw speed, whereas position is telling us a little bit more. It seems to think there's acceleration between these. You could make them a hold keyframe if that works better for you. But when you play it back, that's a night that's a much better transition between two universes, I think but it looks like a blue rectangle. That's, uh, that's, that's not really what we wanted. So what we need to do is take the light background here and have it look at this layer as its alpha mat, all right? But before I do that, because I wanna use a lot of duplicates of this, I'm gonna go Command, Shift, C, pre-compose this into the doorway. So this is the doorway, all right? Hit OK. Now this is gonna be the doorway. It's the doorway shape and we're gonna use it a bunch of times. I'm gonna make its layer yellow, so we can keep them separate. Use a green here, where's green? There we go. And the dark background will be a dark green, so we can tell them apart. So the light background, we wanna see that only in this area. So we're gonna set the track mat to alpha mat of doorway. And now, as you can see, we see, oh, it's like the, the universe back there is visible through this doorway. So we'll scroll ahead to where the flip happens, right here, because when the flip happens, we wanna go from dark on the outside, light on the inside, we wanna flip it. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna grab the invert, grab the invert and apply that. And right away, nothing happens because you need to change the channel to alpha. So there we go. Now the alpha channel is flipping and the point at which it flips is gonna be right here. So let's set a keyframe on the blend with original, go back one and then jack that up to 100%, meaning we're blending it 100% or we're not even looking at the effect anymore. So flip, when the flip happens, sweet, we've got that cool flip going down, because this is now flipping into that. And it takes place right here, so I'm gonna just set a marker hitting the asterisk right there, so I remember, oh yeah, one second, that's the flip time. So let's throw some things through here. Let's let's get some things going through. I'm going to just really quickly make uh, a rectangle. All right, you know, I love rectangles, I love geometry. There we go, simple rectangle. It's kind of like a little catwalk going through the universe. Let's make a ellipse. Don't click up here, get that ellipse, neat. Maybe it'll be it'll be that big. That's a two things going through the universe. I'm not gonna bother to rename them because I don't really care that much. But here at frame zero, let's say that the circle is over here. Call up the position, hit a keyframe there, easy ease it. And by two seconds, it can roll on through to here. All right, go into the graph editor, tweak the speed a little bit, just a little bit. So it's a little bit more interesting, cool. So now this ball is gonna roll on through the door, I guess. And right now you can see that's not what's happening. You know, we, you're not really perceiving that this is going through that doorway. How do we make that happen? We need to take the dark background, duplicate it, and do a little cover up. That's right, things are getting real clandestine up in here. I'm gonna duplicate the doorway as well. I'm gonna remove the invert from it. As you can see, if I just turn that layer back on so we can see it, what I want is 
this darkness, this black background to be everywhere the doorway isn't. So I go track mat inverted. And if I solo this, I've created a hole in the universe. Wonderful. That's, that's perfect. And the next phase of this is to make sure I only have this part over here, this part beyond the doorway. So I'll grab my rectangle tool. I will select the dark background and I will draw a rectangle. Very complex stuff. I'm gonna hit M to call up the mask path because I may have to do a little keyframing here. And I'll just edit the path to be really only cutting half of the door frame. And let's see, oh, where did it go? Do, 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 do. There we go. And now it's gonna make the flip. So the flip is gonna happen. And so we probably won't need the layer anymore after this point. Boop. And unsolo, let's see what we got. So we've got this layer. This layer is covering up over here, and the ball is now going behind it. All right, perfect. So I think the cover-up is working. Now we pop out into this other universe, and we need another cover-up. Duplicate the light background, put it above everything. Duplicate the doorway, put it above everything. Here's where people get kind of messed up sometimes. Don't shift this layer, just extend the layer, and then trim both of these to be here so that they both only click on at this point. It shouldn't be alpha, but alpha inverted because we want to create that hole in the layer. And again, we have to do a little masky mask, right? So take the mask, masking layer, only masking out this half, hitting M, keyframing that mask path and making sure that we're only ever taking as much of the layer as we need. There we go, very quick, don't need to be too precise whoosh, and we just transition right on through. Very good. And that's kind of the basic move. You can do a lot more interesting things if you want. You could have a complex character walk through here. You could have a flock of birds, a spaceship. You might decide, well, I need something to be happening in this kind of gray and desolate universe. Well, if that's the case, then just go into that gray desolate universe. And then I don't know what you'd like in here. Maybe you want, uh, I don't know, another circle. Hmm, I'm always pushing these circles. Let's see, we'll just make that, you know, this tiny circle and we'll have it just kind of flying on by here. Let's see, just call up its position, kind of like this. So we just have this thing kind of rocketing on by, right? We have this little pew, it's going by. If we go back here into the assembly space, you can see, oh yeah, you can see it out the window there. Oh, we transition, oh man, it's right here. If you're thinking about camera movements and stuff, you may need to be shifting these things, having a little bit of parallax happening, that might be something you need to work on. But this is the basic mode of uh, making this happen. I will say, if you want to get more complex with more sophisticated camera movements, do it all very basic to start. Just work on the shape of the door, where it relates to your characters, and then apply this kind of cover-up technique. We can go in, of course, and edit anything about this door we want. And because we're using pre-comps, everything is gonna change and update as we do that. So you're free to update as you'd like. And that is it. Hopefully this opens up some doorways in your mind with how you might transition from one scene to another. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you like learning about motion graphics, motion design, after effects, all that fun stuff, then subscribe to this channel. We put up new tutorials from time to time and uh, if you wanna know when those come up, you gotta subscribe. If you have a question about after effects in general, if you'd like to suggest a tutorial topic, please hit me up on Twitter. I'm on there at EC Abrams. And if you do those things, then I will see you around the internet. Thanks for watching and have a great day. This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, fine art, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Experts like uh, me, I have a course on there, but also experts like Fraser Davidson. He's an excellent director and animator check out his courses on character animation. They are very, very good. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description, skl.sh slash ecabrams5, that's Evan Abrams and the number five, will get two months of Skillshare for free. 